Welcome to the Interiors by Jacqueline video series. Here with Leslie Robertson. Leslie is a textile designer. She has taught textiles also. So she's come from academia and she's now an entrepreneur doing global, philanthropic, artisan, beautiful quality, uh, woven, fantastic textiles. What inspired you mm -hmm. to start this brand, first off? And secondly, tell us a little bit about the meaning behind the name. It's really interesting because when I first went to Uganda, I tried to do research to find out what type of cultural arts from um, the things I'd seen maybe in more of East African countries, and I couldn't find anything. And it wasn't until I landed there and started engaging with the community that I saw this amazing amount of textile. Taking that knowledge, taking that community, now that I've stepped away from academia, doing something with it that I think can go back to help the community, but they can also bring really beautiful work to a new market. But you're working with women in Uganda, um, helping them, and also using natural materials. The makeka itself, and so uh, the palm leaf mat, is actually made from palm leaves. Palm leaves, That okay. are harvested, they're dried, and they're bundled up and then sold to uh, women artisan in different communities to then take and turn into these mats. They're all each individually plated, which is another way of saying that they're woven in a particular fashion. The color is inserted in a way um, that creates the pattern that you see. So you can have anything, you can see three patterns here. Um, this one right here that we call shadow, this one is more of a herringbone, so we'll hold it this way. And this one is what we're calling sekamu, which is a Lugandan term for smile. All of them are the same technique, the weaving, the over, under, over, under, and the intersection of these different fibers. But what makes it unique again is understanding when you have to insert a specific color to get a specific pattern. These are very highly organized uh, weavings that are happening. What you might not understand either by looking at this, and I regret not bringing one of these samples to show you, is that these are actually woven in strips that are about two inches. They're long, they weave meters and meters, maybe about 30, 35 meters, and then they stitch them together this way. So it's a very labor intensive process. <laughs> and they hold their shape, they're yeah. very sturdy, and I just really love that um, really the materials are used in kind of non-traditional ways. Can you explain a little bit about kind of their traditional usage and how you've put a new spin on it for the Western audience? So once I started on Uganda in 2005 um, and made subsequent trips, um, since I would see these mats, they're usually about a one meter by two meters, finished edge, very highly colorful, which are beautiful, and usually they're rolled up in a corner of someone's house. And you could be in the city of Kampala and a very upper middle class house, and you would see a roll of mats, or you could be out um, driving through the countryside and see them maybe strapped home to somebody's bicycle, which I have pictures of, or you would see it, you know, in the back of a um, car rolled up are at the house we're staying in, one of the, the women that helped at the house would put it down and put the ironing board on it and then iron on it. You would just see them being used um, in different ways in different varying households, whether, again, you were in the city or in some of the rural areas. I collected mats 10 years ago, so I have about four or five of the Mikeka floor mats that are in my home, and they're, if you take them and you kind of squeeze them and bend them and do this kind of thing with them, they don't break and they're not brittle. So it's a really amazing material that they're made out of, um, you know, that, that allows it to be something that I think is gonna last, which is exciting. And even in the, though in the West, we may not use them in the same way. Right. How about trying them out in a fresh <laughs> new way? So uh, Mikeka has really, really um, come up with something really special here, Leslie. Really love it. Let's talk about the name because okay. Mikeka, I'm sure people have no idea what that means. Right. Tell me, what okay. is Mikeka? So it came from in, you know, when you're in different cultures, you're interacting with different people and you're trying to translate and understand the spelling of different words um, from one language to the other. So that, that from Lugandan in this particular case to English, um, you'll have different versions and different interpretations. So. I chose Mikeka, which is spelled M-E-K-E-K-A, because um, about 10 years ago I wrote an article for the Surface Design Journal and I used that spelling um, when I wrote the article about the plaited mats and on the floor and how they were made. Mikeka just means mats. <laughs> okay, so this is actually a pretty direct translation except that you put a spin on it, which actually kind of makes sense because you're a brand, it's yeah. not that, And I didn't know. want to, to, to use, you know, the specific word that, and the specific spelling. How long does it take? Let's 
talk about this pillow because this okay. is maybe kind of a more traditional right. one color. What's the process for something like this? How long does it take the woman? The mat making actually takes place over time. So it's going to be hard to track what hours that would be, but it might take a month or more, but you know, a couple hours a day for them to gather, plate, strip everything, the entire process. Um, that's one of the things I'm going to really dig into more of um, understanding the exact number of hours, but I don't think we'll ever be able to figure that out. Here in the States, we're seeing a lot of raffia products. Mm -hmm. This is not raffia mm -hmm. and this is not mechanically made. What I found is interesting about a lot of materials that I'm starting to source now. So I'm sourcing and working with um, the plaited mats, but I'm also sourcing and working with other natural fibers, including bark cloth and other wovens, is that all the fibers that I'm sourcing come from trees. I think that a lot of times we think of textiles, we think of maybe cotton or linen, so plants that grow up from the ground in a completely different way than trees do, or wool or other things like that. Part of how I want to structure Makeka Designs is that we have to think of this holistically. What are some of the things that are going to hinder the women from being productive and being successful? Um, what is the supply chain of palm leaf? You know, we found when I was there in October or November that that's a challenge for some of the women. They're having to go kilometers and kilometers away to access palm leaf and it's not what they need. Um, so we've partnered up with the Bukumen Cindy Organic Tree Farmers Association, um, who's a, run by a really good friend of mine, Fred Mutebi, and so we're going in and planting trees now. So we're trying to address kind of holistically the entire system of what will make this successful, not only for Makeka Designs, but for you know other map makers, people that need to have access to raw materials and to have those things to be successful.